Did you guys know that the average venture capitalist sees 1,000 pitches a year? But did you also know that only 10% of those pitches turn into a meeting? That means that 900 people get rejected. 900 people who think they've got the next Starbucks get a no. In fact, Howard Schultz, the founder of Starbucks, pitched 242 times before he got a yes. My name is Aaron Price. I'm the founder of Propelify, and we've teamed up with Entrepreneur to launch a new show called Pitch Imperfect, where entrepreneurs work with our expert coaches to take their imperfect pitch and turn it into the perfect pitch that gets them that meeting. And so over the last few days, we've been working with two entrepreneurs who we've selected to share with you their pitch today. We've gotten hundreds of applications. All of them submitted videos. And uh, we're going to review their videos and show you how they've improved. But before we do, I want to introduce our expert judges. First, we have Mike Luzio. Mike turned a $15,000 investment into a $60 million exit. He's our business expert. Please help me welcome Mike Luzio. Mike, can you share with everybody what do you think makes for the perfect pitch? Listen, you only have a very brief amount of time to pitch to a guy like me. Your goal is to get to that next step, which is, all right, I'm interested. I want to take 30 or 60 minutes with you. I think the first thing is you got to know your audience. You have to know who you're talking to. You could be pitching to somebody who's 60 years old, 40 years old, 30 years old. You have to know that audience. And for me, you got to have passion, right? When you walk in there, you got to exude it. It's got to be coming out of your ears. This is what I love to do. It's not a side hustle. This is your real thing. This is what you want to do for the rest of your life. You've got to have a good product, but it's got to be about you. I bet on the jockey. I have one of my investments in here is Keto Super Coffee. Jim DeSico's in here. I bet on the jockey. He knew his audience when he pitched to me when I wrote the check to him. You got to know your audience. Awesome. So it's not just the idea and the business that matters. It's also how you communicate your ideas and how you actually speak in public or to another person. And so that's why our other expert coach is Michael Chad Hepner. He runs GK Training and Communications. They train NFL executives, presidential uh, candidates, and lots of startup founders that you know. Please help me welcome Michael as well to the stage. Michael, can you share, you know, the number one piece of feedback that we've gotten around this is people's biggest fear, as many know, is public speaking. So what do you think are some tools, or what are some tools that people can use to overcome that fear, and how they also add persuasive language when it comes to a pitch? One of the biggest ways people screw themselves up in the situations is by trying to actually prevent or suppress their nerves. So if I say to this audience right now, don't be nervous, is that helpful? It puts your attention right on the thing you're not supposed to be doing. So instead, what I teach founders to do is actually rely on their bodies to build positive muscle memory, just like an athlete. I actually say, practice your pitch moving around the room slowly and languidly like an elephant walking through the desert and speak the pitch equally slowly and languidly. What you're doing is putting in place muscle memory of a relaxed connection to that language. Similarly, stand on one foot, deliver the, the pitch. Every time you inevitably lose your balance and have to put your foot down, say, let me go back for a moment, or let me clarify that and come back up onto one foot and keep going. You're ingraining flexibility and recovering from mistakes. How to put concrete language in there? Is something we'll cover later because you're out of time. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, let's take a look at the two videos that we selected, the two companies that we selected. The first one up is Curbicus. I'm Anna, the founder and inventor of Curbicus. We are a direct-to-consumer, subscription-based business for urban pet parents. Curbicus is a device printed on a 3D printer using recycled materials. It is a patent-pending, clean, branded product that uses a roll of compostable bags to eliminate the gross factor in dealing with dog waste. The dog waste is does not get touched by human hands or the interior of the machine. It is retrieved and then ejected into compost bins rather than a regular trash bin or a recycling bin. The compost is then used to fertilize urban parks. Okay, so let's break this pitch down. Now to be fair, part of the, part of the, the guidelines for submission where it could be a very low quality video, so no, no uh, <laughs> taking away points on the quality of the video and the audio, but otherwise, Let's start with you, Luzio. What did you think about the, the pitch and, and the business prospects? So look, the first thing I look at it and say, let's go, 
Like, I need more passion, right? I, I talked about it before. I need her to come out and be like, this is it. I've got the solution that you're waiting for, New York City, right? I've, I've got the idea that no one else has, and you need to listen to it. For me, as an investor, I go, OK, I got it. Plus, I needed a visual. I don't have a visual of what the product is. She's talking about this removing you know, dog feces on the ground. I want to see her do it, right? Show me what you got. Yeah. That would have been a different video. Yes, it would have been. <laughs> That's next. Michael, what do you, what do you, what you have done on the public speaking side of things? Yeah, everyone in the room, imagine you're holding up a set of binoculars. Actually, do this for me real quick, will you? Put your whole, two hands up like that. Look at your left hand. Notice how it looks like a C. The right hand looks like the other half of a capital D. That stands for content and delivery, what you say and how you say it. You can put your hands down now. <laughs> this is a perfect example of the content being pretty solid, but the delivery really suffering. And I know you're saying production value doesn't count, but it does in this case, and I'll tell you why, because you can't actually hear what she's saying compared to the background noise. Now, no fault there. You don't have to invest in a fancy camera, but even that simple choice of can I actually be heard is very relevant in this situation. So on the delivery side of things, what can she do in that situation? You can practice that pitch, but practice it with flexibility. And I mean, say it in 18 different ways, in their 18 different physical stances or postures, so you begin to build an authentic connection to the language as opposed to a much more memorized one, which is very easy to fall into. Perfect. Awesome. Let's take a, next, the next, a look at the next company, Gamefully. I want to monitor this right now. Let me teach you. Oh, right. Hey, guys. My name is Tassine Peterson, CEO of Gamefully. This is my partner. My name is Tafan Turner, COO and Creative Director of Gamefully. We're the founders of Gamefully, the first peer-to-peer -peer marketplace for esports skill development. Our mission is to facilitate and promote esports skill development by connecting gamers that want to teach with gamers that have a desire to learn. So think of us as like a, a Udemy or a Skillshare or Coursera, but for esports. So we identify two massive problems in the competitive gaming marketplace. One, gamers are limited to the opportunities they have to monetize their gaming abilities. The second being, gamers are limited to uh, the ways in which they can improve their gameplay. Um, we're about 30 days out from self <laughs> launching our MVP, and uh, we're really excited to get this on the market. No one's more excited than I, <laughs> especially to finish this video. <laughs> awesome. So again, Luzio, what could they have done on the business side of things? Yeah, OK, first, quickly. Like, I love to taste on it to Tafan, but Tafan's got to know he's in a room pitching. Right? I mean, I get it. This is outside of his comfort zone. For me, maybe it's more Tefan's meeting than Tefan's meeting. But at the end of the day, I want Tefan. He's important to me. He's got to be really confident in that meeting that this is what he wants to do. And the second thing, when I looked at it, as an active investor in multiple different companies over multiple different organizations and vertical markets as well, I look and say, I don't know that gaming community real well. I mean, I don't know where they're going. Give me numbers. Right? Tell me what the numbers are. What do the numbers say? How many people are gaming? How many people are playing? Fortnite. Who's doing that? Because numbers don't lie. This is how big the market space is, or this is this is how big this white space is. We want to take it. Yeah. To build Michael, on that, yeah, to go. build on that for a second. The language, not everyone is a gamer. So make sure if you use any kind of jargon that the audience can understand what you're talking about. But this video is all about the mistake, isn't it? He says the um, goes a bit blank, and the rest of the 15 seconds is about it. But what's fascinating, if you watch this video, if he didn't telegraph to us I made a mistake, we never would have noticed it in the same way. If you're pitching with someone else, guess what? You have your best friend right there. So if he gets stuck, you can build that in a positive way. What else should we add? That's I turn right. to Mike, Mike can jump in and bail me out and save me, as opposed to letting that one simple mistake paralyze and end up dominating what otherwise could be a pretty tight pitch. And in real 15 seconds, I'll say this. When you're pitching, know this. That person sitting across from you has the same problems and issues in life that you do, right? They, they may have $100 million, but they still have issues with their kids, with their wife, with their husband. You have to remember that. Nobody walks on water, right? They have the same problems that you do. So know that, right? I think you may have more problems than I do. I may, I, <laughs> I, traveling psychiatrist should be with me. <laughs> All right, so now let's see what these guys can do live. However, let's add a twist. What you don't know is that we've had an, a real VC, a real investor backstage. She's been in a soundproof room. She's going to hear these pitches live and actually choose which one wins the meeting. 
So please help me welcome Kathleen Griffith to the stage. She's the founder of Grace & Co. It's a marketing agency that works with large, hello, hey, hey. works with large uh, companies as well as a very active investor and she's a judge on Entrepreneur's Elevator Pitch. And so now we're gonna have the pitches come out and we'll start with, uh, we'll do in the same order, we'll start with Kerbikus. Big round of applause, it's a hard thing to do. I'm Anna, the founder and inventor. Anna, hold on. Move in so you're in the frame of the cameras that are recording oh, this. There you go. Being recorded they don't again. bite. <laughs> go ahead. I'm Anna, the founder and inventor of Curbicus, and I'm on a mission to transform the urban paw print. The pet cleanup space will reach $4 billion by 2020 in the U.S. alone. The average dog creates 274 pounds of waste a year, and there are over 600,000 registered dogs in this city alone. Current methods of collecting and disposing of dog waste are broken. There's a huge gross factor of sticking your hand in a plastic bag, walking down the street, bending over, and maybe this is a treatment there for everyone else. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, <laughs> so I invented a branded, completely clean, patent-pending device called Curbicus. It's a direct-to-consumer, subscription-based business for urban pet parents. It weighs three pounds, it's a foot long, and it has a roll of compostable bags in it. It can attach to the leash or your wrist, and the bags are self-closing. It's 3D printed environmentally friendly plastic. And then the bags are disposed in designated compost bins throughout the city and used as fertilizer for urban parks. We're out of time. Yeah. Big round of applause yeah. for Kirby. Yeah. Next up, Anna, you can just come over here for a moment. Next up is Gamefully. Big round of applause, come yeah. on, it's a nerve wracking thing to do. As soon as you're ready. Hello, everyone. My name is Tassine Peterson, CEO and co-founder of Gamefully. I'm Tafan, creative director and co-founder of Gamefully, a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace for esports video game skill development. Tafan and I are gamers. We play Fortnite and Call of Duty, but we've recognized a massive opportunity in a $300 billion space between esports and edtech. And that comes from two problems. One, it's really hard becoming a great gamer without hours and hours of gameplay. And two, great gamers, they're limited to the ways that they can monetize their gaming knowledge. So our solution is Gamefully. Think of us as like a Udemy for esports. Gamers can come to our platform, upload their pre-recorded content, select their own fees, and publish. They can even issue certificates upon completion. And then aspiring gamers come to our platform, they select the course that fits their skill development needs best, they purchase and they learn on demand. Gamefully, we connect gamers who want to learn with gamers who want to earn. Good job. Yeah. Let me stand over here for a minute. So, slide over, slide over. So Kathleen, first starting with you, can you give some feedback before we get to who wins the meeting? What resonated with you and what could they have done better? I think in this case here with Kerbicus, I like the problem and opportunity you're solving for, but I'm not hearing what the results are in, in how you're scaling your business, how you're intending to grow and monetize it. So I think you're totally tapping into a very real pain point. As a dog owner, I can totally relate to everything you're saying. It is anything but elegant, but help me understand the path to monetization, how you're looking to grow. And with Gamefully? Similar feedback for you guys. You're not telling me about your business model. You know, I was able to understand the connection to, to e-courses and learning, which is really nice because I'm not someone who's necessarily involved in this category or vertical, which is important to keep, you know, someone in mind who may not necessarily be as versed in the category. So I think you guys did that really, really well. The area, again, is what is your path to monetization? How well are you guys doing so far? How many customers do you have? Uh, and what sort of target are you looking to engage? So, you know, it sounds like a novice gamer. What's the price point that makes sense here? There was a lot that I think you guys both need to lead with from, you know, just a business perspective, being able to kind of set up that case. Um, but ultimately, both were really approachable and relatable in terms of I was able to grasp um, the pitch, which is, which is important in a very consolidated, concise amount of time. Great. We are just about out of time here, but I just want very, very quick feedback from each of you on 
how you think they improve, and where there might be room for opportunity. You've got about 15 seconds each. One thing to point out, we worked with each of these folks for a half an hour this week, so they got some coaching in advance. I thought in general, both the delivery was far smoother, felt more genuine and authentic, which is great. In terms of the actual content, easier to understand, more basic language, less jargon. That's awesome. Yeah, I think that they both, both improved from the time when we saw the videos. I think everyone in here would agree they improved. Yet again, know your audience, right? I talked to you about this. So you're speaking to her, right? And you, like you was talking to me, the gaming industry is not necessarily like my bailiwick. I want numbers. I want feedback. I want subscri subscri subscription based. Tell me how we're going to make money. And with you, I thought you did a much better job. You know I wanted you to have the product because I really wanted you to scoop it up, right? But at the end of the day, you know, you're solving for a problem. And obviously, you live here in the city and you have a dog, so you get the problem. So I think you did a good job. So Kathleen, moment of truth. Which company wins the meeting? Uh, I'm going to go with Gamakiss, and I'd love to take a meeting with you guys to consider investing <laughs> in you. Interestingly enough, Twitter. that's a merger of both the names. Yes, it's, it's <laughs> Gamakiss. So you want them both. Kirby she wants them both. <laughs> 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 did you really just do that? <laughs> No, no. Which, 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 the, which, the guys which or the girl? Gamefully. <laughs> Gamefully. Okay. All right, all right. <laughs> guys, it takes, it takes a lot of nerve to show off your company. It's a lot oh like showing off. Game of <laughs> it's, so, it's a lot like showing off your newborn. We're rebranding already. Yes. If, if you guys are interested in being on the we show, go to propellify.com slash pitch. And please help me give a big round of applause to our judges and coaches, as well as the, the starters. Thanks, guys.